because no one acts like a hater and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, you know, I'm glad you brought that up. Right now, Florida State leads the ACC in fifth in America with an average of 269 rushing yards oh, yeah. per game. You brought up the blocking aspect of it, and we, and we mm -hmm. give the offensive line credit, and oh, rightly yeah. so. Mm -hmm. But it's not just, just the big tight ends. Mm -hmm. And as you mentioned, you guys get involved in a big-time oh, yeah. way. Who knows? If yeah. you're 20, 30 yards down the field, how a little chip block could, could spring a guy for a house call. Yeah, 100%. Uh, the guys we got in the backfield, shoot, you got to block because, God forbid, you miss that one block. You, <laughs> you'll hear from Coach Norvell and all of them. So I don't want to be that guy that gets yelled at in the film room. Yep. You, this is a receiving core as well. And just talk about this group, Micah, where, man, you got a lot of different body-wide receivers that, mm -hmm. that, that line up very versatile players in the passing game. Uh, you're a guy with seven catches already this season. You're making big catches, extending drives. How about uh, your guy, Pokey Wilson, missed <laughs> game one, yep. and then comes out and has uh, a big time yeah. Sunday night with seven catches for over 100 yards and two yeah. touchdowns. Uh, that group overall, what would you tell people uh, mm -hmm. defines this group in the receiving room right now? In um, the receiving room, we're just we're physical. We're happy to be out there. And that's the thing about football is you want to be happy. You want to have fun. And you got guys laughing, cracking jokes. No matter what the score is, we're having a good time. And uh, these guys have each other's back, and I have their back, and they know that. And uh, just seeing the pokey being able to go out there and make those plays you know, in the game is, is even more awesome because I see him make them in practice all the time. So um, it's super awesome to, you know, see guys succeed. And you always got to be happy for the person that succeeds in the room no matter what because at the end of the day you want people to be happy for you once, once your time comes. So it was really amazing. I told him, I was like, man, you got like 80 yards. You got 20 more. Come on, let's go. <laughs> so I was, I was that guy like talking to him like, you got it, bro. So um, I was happy for him and great phenomenal catches he made in in game time and he helped us win that game so Micah Pittman tied for the team lead with seven receptions this season averaging 12.7 yards per grab uh, time now for our truest hero of the game we talk about Shaheen Brown with the, the block on the bayou right and rightly yeah. so how about my guy here on third downs uh, last week uh, or two or a couple of weekends ago I should say on Sunday against LSU yeah. all three of his catches versus LSU went for first down so yeah. Micah Pittman making plays and keeping drives going keeping drives alive in a big time way true is proud to support the local Tallahassee community and Seminole Athletics with their hero of the game when you start with care you get a different kind of bank that's truest proud partner of the Florida State Seminoles and we are live at Kusha's in College Town Come enjoy good food, good folks, and good times here at Kush's Bayou Rouge. Kush's offers authentic South Louisiana cuisine and some of the best burgers and wings in town. Coming out to Kush's in College Town, the home of Inside Seminole Football. Just getting started with Micah Pittman, ladies and gentlemen, live here at the main table. It's Inside Seminole Football, and you're watching on ABC 27 and listening on the Seminole Sports Network from Learfield. Good, good, good Back live, Kusha's in College Town Monday night. Welcome back to Inside Seminole Football. As you're listening on the Seminole Sports Network and watching live on ABC 27, you can download the app, by the way, the WTXL app, and also check it out online or watch later on on demand online at WTXL.com. Here with Micah Pittman, wide receiver, Tampa native, and uh, I know you've talked a lot about your family. You've got a, a football family, mm -hmm. a competitive family. Your brother, yeah. Michael Jr., currently plays for the Indianapolis Colts. Yeah. And your dad was a member of the, uh, the Super Bowl champion, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Yeah. Mr. Scott Trulock was a part of that staff yeah. as well, yeah. right, back in uh, the early 2000s. <laughs> yeah. You were a young buck. Yeah. What were you, one years old when that I, went down? I was uh, three. Three? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Little, little, little man. Yeah. Hey, I got to tell you, uh, Mr. Derek Satterfield, Director of Media Relations, showed me a picture of you with your dad <laughs> at yeah. practice. Yeah. First of all, your dad looked like he was a bulldozer yeah, as they, a running back. How come he tackle that guy? They tested him for steroids <laughs> every week, so <laughs> I was always like, Dad, why are these guys watching you pee? Like, I was, I was only like three, so I didn't understand. And he's like, these... Yeah, these guys don't understand what hard work is. So all this That's stuff, because he was just trying to, 
he was just trying to get me to understand because they were always testing him because he was so big. So, um, but yeah, I, I don't I don't want to be that big because you know I play a different <laughs> position. But yeah, he's it's been awesome to be part of the uh, pedigree that I have in my family. Yeah, what's that family dynamic like? Yeah. Just just the I mean, you guys probably talk football a lot differently oh, yeah. than we talk football yeah. at the house when you guys are talking about what's going <laughs> on. Take us into an afternoon at the Pittman household when you guys are all together at the same time oh, yeah. and, and talking about your guys' game and about football, period. Uh, it's rare for us to come in at the same time That's in the same say, household. Rare. Yeah. yeah, but uh, we, we love our uh, favorite card game. It's called Spades. And right. uh, me and my brother put on uh, whooping on Uncle Wayne and my dad all the time. And so... Uh, that's the little competitive side we have, and then uh, dad gets mad, tells us to shut up and stuff <laughs> like that. But uh, in, in the house, football-wise, it's been it, it's it's been amazing. All we do is love. We talk ball, and that's what made us so close is yeah. football. And seeing my brother going out there, getting 120 yards, 13 targets, like it, it just motivates me and pushes me to you know want to match him and. Uh, go out there and compete with him because at the end of the day, uh, I feel like I'm better than him and uh, I will always <laughs> let him know that no matter what the stat lines say. Uh, it's just about opportunities and I feel like once my time comes, I definitely will get get up there and shine with him and um, I'm yeah. super I'm super proud of him. When I see him succeed, it makes me feel like I'm succeeding too because, yep. uh, you know, it's your older brother, you grow up with him and so seeing the man he's become and uh, his wife, his daughter. I just love the man he's become, and he's been he's been a great father and 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 a great football player. Yeah, that's fantastic. You you played your high school ball at Calabasas High in California. Your high school teammates with Johnny Wilson. Oh yeah. I mean, how how does that line up? How does an opposing defense look at you and Johnny Wilson in the receiving core? At the same time, yeah. you guys must have just terrorized people <laughs> in high school. Yeah, it was fun in high school. Me and Johnny just had fun. Uh, uh, we got a new nickname for Johnny. We call him 617 because he's <laughs> so freaking tall. So, uh, But he, it's awesome. It's great to see his growth, too. Uh, he's like another brother of mine, just being able to see him grow. Because I've seen him once he was a little baby as an eighth grader, and mm -hmm. he was not 6'7". Right. Uh, and uh, it's been amazing to see, like I said, his growth and his, uh, his ability to respond and things like that. And, uh, he's been learning, and he's been, he's been a great asset for this team, and I'm truly happy that he's my teammate. Yeah. Well, let's talk about the matchup coming up this weekend a little bit. Louisville, we got some, uh, some time before we make our way to Cardinal Stadium to oh, take yeah. on the Cardinals. ACC lid lifter, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> on Friday night, yeah. a 7.30 p.m. Eastern, uh, Eastern kick uh, <clears throat> in Louisville, Kentucky. You've had a little time now to learn from the LSU game. Yeah. Turn the, 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 the page and now focus in on and get ready for Louisville. Louisville, what would you say to people and describe to people about how the last few uh, days and uh, the bye week went for you guys? Well, it was amazing, but we always take the next step. You know, LSU was, I think, last week. I mean, yeah. at this point, I say I think because I'm so focused on uh, Louisville right. now. Um, a win's a win, but now it's time to focus on a 1-0 mentality for, for uh, the next week. And so uh, my focus is on Louisville, and this whole team's focus mm -hmm. on Louisville. We're riding high on, on the LSU game, but we got to continue to ride high and just keep our heads down and stay humble throughout this process and being able to, you know, uh, continue to work and, you know, yep. don't, don't let the, the birds start chirping and start chirping nice things to you because then you start listening to it mm -hmm. and you start easing up, and that's not the time to do it. Yep. Hey, time now for What's on Tap, brought to you by the official craft beer of the Florida State Seminoles, Oyster City Brewing Company. Check out the tap room on Gain Street. Uh, next few days, describe getting ready for, you know, schedule's a little different, right? Yeah. So short and week. How would you describe the next few days for people as you guys prepare? Uh, work hard. That's all we do. Uh, we practice and practice, and it's all about the little things, understanding uh, the coverages and uh, what they do to disguise things, um, being able to recognize it before the play happens, um, and being able to just understand uh, what they're going to throw at us and how we can beat it. And um, so, yeah, I just say studying film and being able to prepare. Physically, we're always going to be prepared, I can tell you that. But uh, it's about on your, on your own time studying the film and mm -hmm. seeing the guy's techniques and seeing how you can beat them and stuff. Before I let you go, last one for you, your mm -hmm. quarterback, Jordan Travis, <laughs> yeah. off to a tremendous start. Mm -hmm. And one of the things you hear from Coach Norvell and Coach Atkins, just the, the confidence and just the, the, the control he has right yeah. now of that offense what would you say to people about how he is running the show right yeah. now and keeping you guys on the same page? Uh, he's an awesome guy. I mean, that's like, my, that's like my brother, too. I've built a relationship with him that I haven't built with many other people in a quick amount of time that we've had. Um, 
So, I mean, I've, I'm, I'm impressed with him, but I, I was expecting it. So um, I've seen the plays he's made in practice, and, I, you know, I'd pop on Twitter every now and then and see the disrespect. I'm like, these guys don't know what's going to come this year for, from 13. And so uh, it's been amazing to see his growth. It's been amazing to see his confidence build um, throughout camp, throughout spring camp, throughout fall camp. And uh, it's been amazing to, you know, see, see, see all the stuff he does and uh, him being able to be on the run, still look down the field, make those plays. I actually made a comment about that uh, during fall camp. And so he's just been showing it and displaying it. Um, and like I said, he's just been super impressive, and I'm, and I'm proud of him. Yeah. Hey, great job. Appreciate, Appreciate it. Appreciate you. <laughs> Micah Pittman, <laughs> ladies you. and gentlemen. How about that? This guy's a pro on the mic as well and they're doing it on the football field, obviously. Joining us here at Cooch is in College Town. Hey, visit Seminoles.com slash FFBI sweeps and register for the chance to win a VIP experience to the Clemson game. Winner gets hotel accommodations, four tickets to the game, four hospitality passes, and Knowles gear. Register today at Seminoles.com slash FFBI sweeps. We'll take a time out. When we come back, Josh Shorms will stop by, the Director of Football Strength and Conditioning for the Seminoles, as you're listening to the Seminole Sports Network from Learfield. Thank you. Live Monday night, Koosh is in College Town. Welcome back, Knowles fans. Inside Seminole Football. My name is Jeff Colhane. It's Florida State getting ready for another primetime game under the lights. Friday night, a 7.30 p.m. Easter kick, taking on the Louisville Cardinals, Cardinal Stadium. It is the ACC lid lifter for Mike Norvell and the Knowles. Hey, I'm really excited to be joined here. Uh, he and I, uh, he was on my podcast, uh, Behind the Mic, the official podcast of FSU Athletics. Uh, you talk about how influential and important strength and conditioning is to a college football program. It's what it's all about right here. Get a big round of applause. Mr. Josh Storms, Coach Josh Storms, ladies and gentlemen, Director of Football Strength and Conditioning. It's great to have you and going to talk to you again, sir. It's how awesome you, to be here. How are you doing? Doing great. Doing great. Doing great. Thank you so much for coming down. Um, what's this week like, by week um, Schedule-wise, we're, we're talking about some of that a little bit more, but you know things are a little different. I know you got uh, you, you've got the, uh, the the less of a day because you're on a Friday night overall. Gotta take me through your routine as you get these guys ready to go for another game. Yeah, you know, coming off of bye, we can do a short week. You know, we kind of adapt and adjust the schedule a little bit. And, uh, you know, coming from being in the American Conference before we came here, we played a lot of those weeknight games. So we sure. have, you know, quite a few years of experience of kind of what our recipe is for these short weeks. So coming into the week, we kind of move the day off to the end of the week. You know, we come in on Sunday, have our typical shorter practice Sunday, then we kind of just shift everything today. Today, even though it's Monday, it's a Tuesday practice. You cut a day, we kind of adjust the train a little bit, and then we'll lean real heavily on Jackson Schaefer and our sports science mm -hmm. to kind of adjust the workloads and make sure we're still primed to have our best be on the field Friday night instead of a Saturday. There you go. Our Tijuana Flats queso question. That was from uh, Grayson in St. Augustine, Florida, by the way. He wanted to ask about that a little bit. And on that, from Grayson's question, um, the collaboration with not only, uh, you know, strength and conditioning, but nutrition, the mental health side of things. We're going to talk to, to Scott Trulock with, with everything that goes on in sports medicine. What's that collaboration like overall at this time of year? You know, it's, 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 a, daily, it's, a, it's a daily relationship thing because, you know, with preparing our guys through you know, through practice, through training, through class, just through the, the stresses of being a student athlete, it, it's more than just strength conditions, more than just sports medicine, mental health, all those things. So all of us need to work together because we all have different relationships and different interactions with our guys. And, you know, you may pick up on something in one area that will help another area. So it's the daily communication of us getting together, kind of huddling up and kind of going over what the, the day in, day out, and making sure everything's meshing up to, to put our guys in the best spot to be successful. Yeah, big thanks to Grayson from St. Augustine with our uh, Tijuana Flats queso question right there. Um, I think, Coach, that, that your side of the, the, the sports world is just fascinating and how things have continued to grow and evolve. You know, we talked about before technology and, and how much of that has evolved into how you guys go, up, uh, you know, through your your day by day uh, schedule and routine. How's it changed for you in the last 10? You've been with Coach Norvell for the last 11 seasons. What was it like 11 seasons ago? 
compared to what it's like right now? I mean, it was a lot less gray hairs for both of us, probably. <laughs> but, it, you know, just in, you know, as time goes and, you know, you know as, as Coach fine-tunes in his recipe of what our practice script looks like and how we prepare our guys in that aspect, and you always want to make sure that we do training through the winter program, through tour duty, through the summer, meets the demands of what we're actually getting the guys ready to go do. And so we have kind of what we've seen, you know, anecdotally over the past of what works, but now that you bring in the sports science to it, and that gives us a whole new lens to view what we're doing through. And then you can really figure out like, if what we're doing truly matches up with what a practice looks like. Do our practice demands truly meet what a game asks of our guys? And so then you can start fine tuning it that way. We've kind of changed some of the things and how we condition and how we do some of our speed work in the summertime. And we script that much like we would have practice. And so yeah. when those guys go, you know, leave the field on a Tuesday night in the summer, you know, the first thing they'll say is like, gosh, man, that, that, felt, that felt like a practice. Well, good, mission accomplished. That's yeah. what we're out to go do on those nights to be ready to roll when camp comes. And that's where our guys bounce back well from practice to practice throughout camp so we can stay at a high level, transition to the season. You know, health stays high, great team behind to make sure that happens as well. I heard Micah say tour duty. I heard you say tour duty. We're going to talk more about that in our next segment. Tour duty, what that's all about, and just how you guys do what you do to get this group ready for the grind of a college football season. It's really interesting and really exciting stuff, ladies and gentlemen. As Josh Storms with us, the director of football strength and conditioning for the Florida State Seminoles here live from Cooches in College Town. And did you know that reading one text while driving takes your eyes off the road for about five seconds? At 55 miles per hour, that's like driving the length of a football field with your eyes closed. Put your phone down and set aside all distractions. Don't drive distracted. Arrive alive. Brought to you by the Florida Department of Highway Safety and Motor Vehicles. More with Coach Storms when we return as you're watching Inside Seminole Football live on ABC 27 and listening on the Seminole Sports Network from Learfield. All right, back live, Cushies in College Town, Monday night, Louisville game week. That's a Friday night ACC kickoff under the lights, Cardinal Stadium, 7.30 p.m. Eastern kick. We are on the air on the radio side at 5 p.m. Eastern with bar none, William Floyd, Tom Block, and the gang, Andy Surratt, Chris Culp. Great to have our fine engineer back with us here this week. Awesome to have him with us taking care of our, uh, our radio crew each and every show out. Time now, how about a Chick-fil-A stat nugget? I'm a guy that likes a, likes a good stat nugget coach here, and we've got a few of them. Some good stuff from, uh, from Derek Satterfield, Media Relations Director for Florida State Football, Florida State Athletics. Right now, Florida State's defense ranks second in the ACC and 19th in the country with an average of 256 yards of total offense allowed per game. Second in the ACC, 16th nationally in passing defense, only allowing an average of 140 yards per game right now and just giving up uh, right under 29% third down conversion. That's the third lowest rate allowed in the ACC. So getting off the field, getting after it. I see, I see you and your staff, I practice third down, money downs mm -hmm. for that defensive group. That's right, right there, getting after it and, uh, and going to work. We talked before we went to break about uh, tour of duty, and uh, Micah mentioned it as well during his uh, segments up here, give folks a little insight into, uh, into what that means and, and uh, what that does for, for your staff and also for this football team when you put them through that. Yep. So, you know, so tour duty is a big part of our, of our winter conditioning program. When we come back after the season, we come back in January, we start that right away. And, you know, it's an interesting time of year because you have leaders who have, who have moved on, and it's a time of year where there's, there's – you know, you have guys who are aspiring to be leaders, and there's a little bit of a void because you have guys learning how to be leaders or stepping up to bigger roles in that aspect. And tour duty gives us the opportunity to help guys, put guys in those situations to get those leadership reps to become not just leaders within workouts, but leaders on, you know, within their group, guy next to them, side of the ball, team. Mm -hmm. So it matters most when they cross the white line and doke on Saturdays. And that all starts back in January. Yeah. Um, you know, that Matt Joe program, which is a big part of tour duty, you know, something that, that was the fabric of Florida State. That was Coach Bowden, Coach Andrews. That came from here. And it was something that we've done in our program for 10 plus years, and it came from here. Yeah. And it was, you know, such a unique situation to be able to come back and bring that back here that hasn't been done in a while. And I remember our first one here in, in you know, 2020 and getting ready to start that mat and looking over, and there's Coach Andrews on the side watching watchfully, and it's like, whoa, that's like, I don't know, that's a big moment, you yeah. know, because that's a, you know, he has a standard of what that looks like. And, you know, him watching us take the guys through that and, you know, a, you know, a nod of approval and, and how Coach pushes the guys and how we orchestrate that. 
And, you know, that's been a huge part of our program that helps put guys in those positions to develop into those guys you see on game day that can lead the group and lead this team. Coach, accountability, uh, I feel like with every team, it starts with, with you guys it, during that time mm -hmm. in the winter and then certainly during the summer times as well. And I know that's something that uh, you preach and that uh, obviously Coach, Nor Coach Norvell preaches on a, on a day-in, day-out basis in so many ways. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the accountability and the consistency is, is everything. I mean, you, you know, you, you got to eliminate the, the ups and the downs, and that's where the consistency comes in. And, you know, it's not just being accountable to yourself and what your goals and what your dreams are, but it's also accountable for your teammates next mm -hmm. to you. And that's one of the biggest things where this team is growing this year is you're starting to see a group of guys that is understanding the difference be play, between playing with each other and playing for each other. Mm -hmm. And when that growth starts to happen, like, that's powerful and that's dangerous. Yeah. And, and you see that happening. And we've, we saw it clear back in January. So some of the things you're seeing now and some of the statistics to go with it, and you hear some things Mike is saying, like, to those of us on the inside, that's not a surprise. We've seen this growing. We've seen it coming. Yeah. And we still have a long ways to go, and we always will. But you're seeing that, pro that progress in the guys as they make this their own. And it's not necessarily has to be, you know, coach-driven all the time. You know, it can be coach-fed, and we try to keep it where it's, it's player-led. Yep. As you mentioned before, and we talked about, uh, even co around with Coach Norvell the last 11 years and all seven years that he's been a head coach in college football, you guys have, uh, I feel like every head coach, every strength staff and director of strength and conditioning there's, there's a, a, a tight bond there and, and a relationship where, uh, especially when football is over and, and you're gearing up for a season, there's, there's a lot of you know, communication on here's what we need as a football team overall. How would you describe your relationship with Coach in building his team to where he wants them to go? Yeah, I think that, you know, that relationship starts with you know, your bond between your head football coach and your head strength coach. Is, you know, your, your, your moral compass needs to be pointed the same direction to begin with. And then from there, you need to be wired the same way in, in, what, in how you want to push guys, what your expectation is of your program, you know, what you accept, what you push, what you coach, and what you're going to try to you know, move the rudder to steer a program mm -hmm. a certain direction. And if you can be on the same page with that, then it comes down to now we're both singing the same song, but we got to do it different ways because I'm with those guys in the trenches every mm -hmm. single day. And the, the amount of pressure I apply is different than the, the pressure a head coach applies. Yeah. You know, and so it, it's, it's making sure those two things work together. And like I said, we're both, you know, singing the same tune in our own way, pushing towards the same goal every day. And then that spreads out to, to my staff, to the rest of our staff. And then you see it where it really starts to grow is where the kids start to speak those same things. Yeah. When that happens, you know, you're, you know you're doing the right things. You know you're pushing the right direction. Time now for our Scott and Wallace Keys to Success as we're talking with Coach Josh Dorms, the Director of Strength and Conditioning for Florida State football. Scott and Wallace, the official law firm of the Florida State Seminoles, 222-7777 with offices in Tallahassee. What would you define a, a, a successful day with your workouts, with your group? When you think of, hey, this is what we've got planned today for our guys, when, you, when you're writing stuff down on the, the grease board, the chalkboard, Give me keys to success for Florida State football in the weight room and the conditioning area. Yeah, you know, you know the keys to success with that is, is what is the mood, what's the energy when the guys come in the room to begin with? Because if, if that's not right, the rest of it's going to be a battle after that. Mm -hmm. But when those guys, you know, you can hear them down the locker room as, as they run down, as they can run down the hallway into the weight room, and you can tell right away. You can tell by the, the sound and the energy it makes coming down the hallway what kind of day it's going to be. And then from there, it's getting guys in. It, it, it's us, you know, keeping close track of our guys. What is progress for this guy? Because everybody's in a different place in, the, in their path and in their journey. And there's a lot of meeting guys where they're at to help address the things they need to get better at and then be able to see those guys improve in those areas. And, you know, that, that's the exciting part of it is when you see the improvement, you see the growth. And so if you can sit back at the end of the day and, you know, we kind of sit as a staff and kind of, you know, wind back and review mm -hmm. the day and, you know, so-and-so got better at this and you saw guys lead, you hear guys speaking the right things and you can sit back and be like, that was, that was a successful day. If we can continue to keep stacking those up, then we got a chance to have great success in the future. Yep. He's Josh Storms, ladies and gentlemen, the director of strength and conditioning for Florida State football. Very, very good stuff to say the least. One more segment with him here live from Kusha's in College Town. As, hey, Tijuana Flats wants to give Knowles fans a free taco and chips every Friday this football season. Just wear your Knowles gear into your local Tijuana Flats and mention the Knowles Fridays promo to get your free taco and chips. It's that easy. So grab your Knowles gear and head to Tijuana Flats, home of Knowles Fridays. More to come as you're watching us live on ABC 27 and listening on the Seminole Sports Network from Learfield. We're back inside Seminole football, rolling along on Monday night. 
Louisville game week as the Knowles get ready for the ACC opener Friday night, 7.30 p.m. Eastern kick. That's on ESPN. That's on the mothership, ladies and gentlemen. We'll have you covered on the radio side starting at 5 p.m. Eastern t- uh, time on the Seminole Sports Network from Learfield. And uh, one more segment here with Josh Storms, Director of Football Strength and Conditioning. Got to ask you about uh, the rock and the, and the stone breaking that thing up at the end of games. Also, it's a... Uh, it's an item that happens when you guys reach milestones during the year as well. And I know uh, it's a conversation that it's a big deal. Who gets to, to carry uh, the hammer and bust that thing up? Uh, talk to me about how that, how that comes together and what that means when uh, you see the guys do that. It's a pretty special moment, to say the least. Yeah, it is. I should have brought it with the show. <laughs> <You're right>, exactly. <laughs> you know, so, you know, that's something we've done. We've done that in a program for a long time. And, um, you know, for us, you know, like it is, it's a milestone thing throughout the year. And, you know, so when we get to the end of the summer program, the end of camp, then after that, after, after every victory in the locker room afterwards. And then, you know, kind of choosing the guy that's going to break that rock. That's, you know, a guy who had a great impact on the outcome of the game. And that's kind of a, you know, decided in the, in the moment thing. And then for, you know, the player who carries that, you know, through legacy walk or into the stadium on game day, that's kind of a culmination of, you know, the, the week of preparation they've put in and, you know, usually, you know, we'll choose a guy who has qualities about him as a man that embody qualities that great teams have. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we'll kind of, to, to make the, the comparison with, you know, from who that guy is and what he does and how that reflects upon the team and affects his teammates. And so that's the guy that gets to carry that in. So that's a big honor as well. Um, you know, this year, you, you know, for everybody that's, that's seen it, the, you know, the hammer that we use now is, is, is new. Um, the Master Craftsman Shop on campus did a phenomenal job uh, crafting that for us, and that's a, that's a, it's, a true, it's a true work of art, and it is 40 pounds, and it's a load to carry wow. around. Yeah, it's pretty special. Pretty cool. I mean, when we see the videos at the end, I mean, it's, it's goosebumps. For, I mean, for us, I can't imagine being in the room and just see the guys do it. I mean, when the hammer is for Shaheem, Headed to him at the end of the game. Uh, that's something those guys will never forget. Yeah, no, it's it's an awesome moment. You know, and the, the you know the rock we break. You know, with the logo. You know, re- representing the game that we just played. You know, in the pregame meal. You know, all the guys as they go up to eat will will sign their name on that rock. Kind of just you know just a you know a symbolic thing of, of uh, you know I'm here to do my job. I'm about this. I'm checked in. I'm clocked in. I'll do whatever yeah. it takes to be successful and break this rock at the end of the day. And when you break that, you know, you climb a mountain one step at a time. And that's just kind of a symbol of, of taking the next step in the journey as we climb forward. They take this time to talk about your staff. And the last time we talked, you told me all four of your guys are going after their, their master's degree right now. Is that correct? Yeah. Uh, um, and I don't think, like you said, that might be the only, I don't know, anybody else in America on the same strength staff that's, that's going and getting after and doing that right now. Yeah, you know, we, have a, we have a unique program here on, on campus at Florida State is there's a, there's a, a master's certificate in coaching. And uh, it's a unique thing, and all my guys already have, you know, all their degrees or certification, and it's just some of those guys all, cho- all chose to pursue together to, to do that, just to, you know, pick up some more tools to the toolbox. And think what we can be a little more well-rounded at what we do. We have a great staff, but, you know, you also have a group of guys that, you know, it's the same expectation we have of the guys. Mm-hmm. Can you find a way to get better? Can you keep pushing forward? Can you do some uncomfortable things to improve yourself and serve those around you? And all those guys kind of made that commitment this semester to start that program. So. Yeah, it's very cool. Very impressive. Coach, and we appreciate your time and the work you do building the Knolls uh, in the offseason and keeping them going, right, during the season as well. Thanks so much for stopping by. Absolutely. That's Josh Storms, ladies and gentlemen, Director of Football Strength and Conditioning at Florida State University. He and his crew are outstanding and second to none. Hey, get free local news and weather 24-7. Just search WTXL on your favorite streaming device and watch local news and weather on your time on ABC 27. Coming up next... Looking forward to our conversation with Scott Trulock. He's the director of sports medicine here at Florida State University. As you're watching Inside Seminole Football live on ABC 27 and listening on the Seminole Sports Network from Learfield. along live from Cushies in College Town. Great to have great Knowles fans with us, our Knowles family down here as well. It's Inside Seminole Football. My name is Jeff Colhane. Friday night, we turn our attention to Louisville, and the Knowles have turned their attention to the Cardinals already preparing and getting ready for their ACC opener. As say, Inside Seminole Football brought to you by T-Spark Enterprises. Want a guaranteed win? Call T-Spark for your next roofing or construction project. We conquer all peaks. T-SparkConstruction.com. 
Hey, let's get a big round of applause. Mr. Scott Trulock, he is the director of sports medicine for the Knowles. Kind enough to join us here on Inside Seminole Football. Thanks so much for the time, by the way, Scott. We appreciate it. Um, y- you come in. This is your second year as Florida State's director of sports medicine. Kind of detail for people as you're coming in. Some of the things that you were uh, excited about, kind of looking to implement and uh, kind of put your stamp on overall with what you, you do and your approach on the sports medicine side here at FSU. Yeah, oh, thanks for having me. It's great being here. Yeah. But, um, yeah, you know, back in the spring of 21, having the opportunity, you know, at the time, Dave Coburn and Coach Norvell and Michael Alford really had a vision for where they wanted to see the area of performance go. And obviously when you think of sports medicine, it's the athletic trainers, the physical therapists, the dietitians, mm-hmm. the mental health. But really it's the way that group works with, you know, Coach Storms and the strength and conditioning staff that – you know, from the student athlete perspective, they're seeing all those people work together to have them be at their best on Saturday. And obviously there's a lot that goes behind it in the scenes. Yeah, I mean, it's streamlining it all into sort of almost one umbrella while those things that you talk about with, with athletic training, sports medicine, nutrition, strength and conditioning, now mental health certainly very always has, but, but even more so very, very important for student athletes and, and everyone uh, around uh, athletics period. Um, how has that kind of changed during uh, your time? Spent many years in the NFL with some great organizations. We talked about the Super Bowl before, but but pulling that all together, streamlining it essentially into into one umbrella. Um, what's that been like from your perspective? Yeah, I mean, I think we're, we're always looking for the winning edge, and, and our field has constantly evolved. And you know, we focused understandably on the physical health of the athlete. But as time's gone on, we realize the, the mental health component of it. Um, and, and it's, you know, looking at peak performance and, and helping athletes deal with some of the stress and anxiety and the things they face. And we found if we can, you know, incorporate the professionals to do that, then yeah. we can help them achieve their goals in a greater way. Yeah. Um, you, you take care of the, uh, the student athletes, bumps, bruises, uh, day, and you got a great team, obviously, day in and day out where uh, you have obviously full-time staff, but you also have folks around you as well that, uh, that, are, that are wanting to continue to climb the ladder and, and are going to school and doing things in that uh, uh, nature as well. Um, what's a day in the life like with uh, the sports medicine team at Florida State University? Yeah, I mean, obviously people, when they think about the day for the student athlete, obviously meetings and practice, but, you know, for, for the injured student athletes, and that's, you know, ones that have even minor injuries, you know, our athletic training staff, Josh Chapman and Tyler Webb and Alicia, you know, they're in the athletic training room at 6 a.m. You know, when you're an injured student athlete, there's a lot of work that goes in doing everything you can to try to recover and get well. So that's 6 a.m. for that group and with the athletic training staff and working through what they're able to at practice and then finishing up in the afternoon. And you know, we've got to remember our, our partners over at Tallahassee Orthopedic Clinic, uh, mm-hmm. Dr. Stowers and and Dr. Thompson and Oberste, you know, those physicians are a critical part of what we do in diagnostics and helping guide our recovery yeah. plans. Yeah, absolutely right. Uh, here with uh, Scott Trulock, Director of Sports Medicine at Florida State University. Ladies and gentlemen, one more segment with him before we wrap things up here on a Monday night. Hey, in town for a game this fall. Stay at Four Points by Sheridan, Tallahassee, downtown, located in an iconic round building across from the Florida State University campus. Parking always complimentary, plus free shuttle service to the airport and Doe Campbell Stadium. Make your hotel reservations at Four Points by Sheridan, Tallahassee, downtown today. We'll take a time out. More with Mr. Scott Trulock when we return watching live on ABC 27 and listening on the Seminole Sports Network from Learfield. Hey, back one final time here live at Cooches in College Town inside Seminole Football. My name is Jeff Colhane, the man sitting next to me, Scott Trulock, the director of sports medicine in his second year here at Florida State University. And you're a, you're a guy that grew up here, Florida State. You told me we were talking today at practice. Uh, you've got a, a, a really, really fun an intriguing and interesting family tie to Florida State with your father, yeah. correct? Let folks know about that. Yeah, so I grew up in Orlando, but uh, my father was one of the 16 inaugural graduates of the law school. Uh, wow. First class to enroll in 66, and there was a small group that graduated early in uh, December of 1968. So I grew up here, came to 
the games in Doe Campbell Stadium and, and watch Coach Bowden build the program into yeah. the national power it was. So a lot of history here. Yeah, we were just talking off the air. You'd, you'd watch the old TV shows with Gene and, and Coach Bowden, uh, Burt Reynolds as well, Vic Prinzi, uh, and we were just discussing some of those shows that you'd watch on Sunday morning, yeah. coming home from church as a kid. That's right. That was every Sunday morning. We would watch the Coach Bowden show with Burt Reynolds. That was the highlight of the yeah, week. Yeah, absolutely. We talked about it earlier. You are someone that's had extensive experience in the National Football League and have been around organizations, Tampa Bay, Denver, Philadelphia, San Diego, uh, spent uh, seven seasons as the head athletic trainer for the Jacksonville Jaguars mm -hmm. as well. And you got a Super Bowl ring. In Tampa Bay, uh, we talked about that. What an experience. How, how would you describe that time uh, continuing to, to learn and grow in the National Football League? Yeah, it was very fortunate. It was part of that great team, uh, the Tampa Bay Bucks in the late 90s, early 2000s. And obviously, you know, came close with Derek Brooks during that time. Uh, but people forget on that team, Greg Spires was on that yeah. team. Dexter Jackson was on that team. There were a lot of great Knowles. And, and really, through that whole time in the NFL, there were so many great uh, Seminole players Mm -hmm. You know, Mickey Andrews and those guys produced such a great defensive talent for years and years. And, yeah. you know, over the years, getting to connect with those guys. Yeah, absolutely. And we were talking about you know, Micah Pittman was on the show earlier. His father, Michael Sr., uh, a part of that Tampa Bay uh, Buccaneers football squad that won a Super Bowl as well. And those two guys, you know, yeah, Michael Sr. and Mike Allstott in the same backfield together. That's a long day at an opposing – that group needs a head athletic training staff like yours to take care of them after a game like that. For sure. It's one of those things that makes me realize how old I am and how long I've been doing this. <laughs> I've, I've now taken care of kids of athletes who I worked with in the past, so it, it happens quick. But, yeah, certainly a great team, and that's yep. really a, you know, a special part of being able to take care of families and, and see their kids grow. Yeah. All right, let's talk about, uh, Scott, before I let you go here. We're, we're heading to game three, so there's a lot of football season left. Kind of take us through what you guys keep your eye on, what you're watching for, and how you, you also help in preventing, you know, some of the injuries that, uh, that could occur before they happen and that are out there with this team. Yeah, obviously in our field of sports medicine, we treat the injuries, but our number one goal is to prevent them. And that's where, you know, Coach Storms and his staff come into play and, and making the student athletes bigger, stronger, and faster, but it's about building durability. Um, and they're such a critical part of that. And really, the early buy is helpful. I know you, you'd yeah. like to have one later in the year, but training camp takes its toll, and, and this is really a good time for us to be able to s focus more on recovery and, and get them ready for the stretch run here. Hey, Scott, great stuff. Thanks for all you do, and thanks so much.